speech and we condemn any form of anti-Semitism. To that end, we've made the decision to suspend our relationship with Kyrie Irving effective immediately and will no longer launch the Kyrie 8. We are deeply saddened and disappointed by the situation and its impact on everyone. Okay, if you're just with us, uh, Kyrie Irving and Nike are not in business for the moment. That relationship is suspended. And as we said just before the break, Kyrie Irving's shoes are wildly popular in amongst basketball players, amongst kids in particular. But uh, that the newest model apparently is going to be on hold for now. Yeah, and you know, the key word in that whole statement was suspense. So we understand that that model is going to come out at a certain point, just not right now. But to that point, he's in the top five. And, and money means things, numbers mean things. That's why it was such a big deal for Adidas to cut ties with Kanye because he's one of their top sellers of the whole company. And so that has a financial impact. And usually in sports and in brands and anything, if you're producing and making money for someone, they'll tolerate a lot. So that tells you how big this situation is and the magnitude of where we are with Kyrie. Yeah. Yeah, money means every money means some things, but it doesn't mean everything. And sometimes you have to make a decision what you think is best for your organization and the right and right way you think you should go. And that's where uh, Nike is right now. They Kyrie has offended a lot of people, even though he's apologized. There are a lot of people that were offended by um, what is going on. And, you know, Nike is saying, hey, at this moment, we, we can't do business with you because of that. And there's a there's a cost benefit analysis that goes into that from corporations in terms of what will the public tolerate? Can we continue to sell our products? And then there's a, a, a more personal and conscience-driven aspect to it, depending on who's running those companies. What do we want to stand for? What do we think the people who represent us should stand for as well? And, and clearly, Kyrie Irving has crossed a line and touched a nerve uh, with corporations, with fans, and with the Brooklyn Nets as well. Yeah, like, listen, everybody's telling, everybody's saying through their actions how they feel about what is going on as far as from a corporate standpoint. So um, if you're Kyrie, um, he has, he's obviously suspended for five games. You have to sit back, reflect, um, really do your homework on, on what you're speaking on make, and yeah. uh, be able to articulate your points well when uh, you have to go out there and speak on them and moving forward, understand how to move in our, our society as far as in these situations. Yeah, I think we're in the digital age. And so in the digital age, you can't just say something and it just dies in the air. You know, like yeah. once you say something, it's going to get repeated. It's going to get researched. There's going to be a lot of ripple effect. And so I think that to your point, Anytime you say something as an athlete or anyone with a platform, you have to understand that there's a ripple effect that's going to happen. There's going to be yeah. people that research it. There's going to be people that fact check it. There's going to be people that are going to be offended. Us sitting here right now, we know anything we say, people are going to have a problem with it on the Internet because no, right. everyone's not going to agree with everything we say. Sure. So at least you have to do your research. And if you do do your research, that's when you can stand behind something and be like, look, I've done all the research I need to do, and this is how I feel. But you can't have it the other way. You can't say how you feel and then do the research because you get yourself in situations. The digital imprint is out there. And even if it's someone who's not particularly famous, once they become famous, then people research everything they put out yes. there in the world and find things good or bad. Um, if you're around Kyrie at this point, He's issued the apology. He's got to wait out a suspension of at least five games. There are groups, including the NBA, the Brooklyn Nets, the Anti-Defamation -Def League, who want to meet with him. What, what advice would you give him at this point? Listen, like I, I think the best advice you can give to Kyrie now is you got to listen. And you got to listen to not just yourself, not just your inner innermost circle, because sometimes your inner circle, they're going to be of the same thought process as you sometimes because maybe raised in the same way, have the same views, the same philosophies. But if everyone around you, you know, is saying something different, if everyone around you is alarmed by something, I understand that sometimes, you know, there's the sheep mentality. And I think Kyrie doesn't like that mentality of everyone thinking the same. But sometimes if everyone around you is saying the same thing, you have to listen and not necessarily agree or agree or say what they say and feel the same way about what they say, but you have to listen to understand what they're saying. And I think there was a week period where Kyrie was not listening. He felt like he understood what he was trying to say. And even though we didn't maybe understand what he was trying to say, he wasn't listening to anyone around him. And then the apology came, it seems a little bit too late. Yeah, I still don't entirely understand what he was trying to say, but I think what rubbed a lot of people the wrong way was how stubborn he was in terms of trying to put out a statement without an apology included in it. Yeah. So he sort of acknowledged that he had uh, 
hurt groups of people, angered I, I don't think of we people. I don't think we would be here today if the apology had came sooner. Exactly. Yeah. And that's, I've been, let me see. Yeah, I've been married for four years. Now. Okay, you better know that. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I thought about it. Carry the one. I've yeah. been ma- I've been married for four years now. Uh-huh. I wouldn't have lasted four months Facts. if I didn't learn how to apologize. Sure. When I did something or said something that offended my wife, even if I didn't think I was wrong, I have to look at how she interpreted it exactly. and how it affects her mentals on a day to day basis. Yeah. And once you once you once you're able to look at yourself in that aspect and tell somebody I'm sorry um, for the way you made them feel, even if you might not be on the same common ground, exactly. that's when you make growth as a person. And that's what I would tell Kyrie is that that's the type of thing you have. To, sometimes you have to say you're wrong, not because of what you necessarily believe, but for how you made somebody else feel. Yep. Exactly. And, and I think he gets caught in his intentions. Yeah. Like, because... Kyrie Irving, we can all say, like, he has a good heart. We see the things that he does. Oh, he does, he does he, tremendous work. He does so much. He's not just this. That exactly. Is, it is important that we put out there Kyrie Irving is not just this. Exactly. Sure. There's going to be some people that think he is just uh, the guy that promoted this movie or yeah. uh, what the book, whatever it is. He is more than that. Exactly. He does so much good in the community. But right now, he's caught up in a in a very dicey situation. And don't and, let what and, you've done get overshadowed, yeah. too. So it's like, I we all know the good things that Kyrie has done. And then there's these things that make you like, oh, Kyrie, why don't you listen more or understand that his intentions, he, he gets stuck in, I think, his intentions of, I wasn't trying to hurt the, this group. 